Okay. I'm going to just now also mention some aspects that you need to know for uh, question two. I'm going to enlighten you on one or two of them. The conversions. I'm quite sure yesterday afternoon in the measurement lesson you were given some conversions to do. Grade 12 conversions you will do. Conversions within the metric, metric system, we are using the metric system where we are using meters and centimeters and millimeters and kilograms and grams. This is the metric system. Within the metric system, you must be able to convert from memory. In other words, you must know when to multiply, when to divide, and whether it's going to be with 10, with 100, or 1,000. You must go and practice that. I'm not going to do it right now. You must be able to convert between units. You must also be able to go from centimeter square and meter square to liters, or from millimeter cube, centimeter cube, millimeter cube to milliliter and liters. If you cannot do that, please go and practice that. If you are going to have to do another measurement, a uh, conversion, Say, for instance, you are going to have to convert um, pounds to kilogram. Because in other countries, they don't all work with kilogram. They buy things in pounds. Okay. But for us to understand the pounds, we need to convert that pounds into kilogram. The, in that case, the conversion factor will be given. Okay. So you don't have to remember it there. And then you are again going to do an ordinary ratio sum. Let me show you just again. If you are going to say, for instance, you are going to con make a conversion where you are going to say maybe one kilogram is more or less 2,2 pounds. They must give you this conversion factor here. So if you are then going to do, you do it just like we did the rate previously. If you have pounds, you write under pounds. If I say you have 400 pounds, how many kilograms will it be? Write under pounds, write under pounds 400, and then make your sum. To get this answer, I must overcross multiply and I must divide. So it's 400 multiply by 1, divide by 2,2. Okay. They are all applications of ratios, but in the cases of pounds and inches and those things, we will give you the conversion factor. You don't have to know them. Okay. Um, sorry about that. Temperature. It can be asked of you to do temperature from degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. The formula will be given to you. Okay. There is a formula to do it. You don't have to remember it. It will be given to you. Time. We are getting different time formats, digital and analog. What is very important is that you must be able to do calculations with time. Okay. Let me do for you an example again. Let me just go here. Um, if you would do a calculation with time, Let's say you are getting on a bus at 10 minutes past 10, okay? And you are going to be at your destination at 5 minutes past 3. What is the elapsed time? You can go and count forward, but another way to do it is to do it with a single calculation. And that is going to be, you take the later time, and you subtract from the later time, the earlier time. It's actually the big number minus the small number. Okay, I'm sorry, 10, 10. Now my question is, if you have 10, 10, if you have 10, 10, can you ca subtract 10 from 5? No, you cannot subtract 10 from 5. Okay, so what is it that I'm going to be doing? I'm going to borrow here from the hours. I'm going to borrow 1. And when I take it that side, I'm no longer going to have just one hour. One hour is 60 minutes. So when I bring the 60, that one to this side, you are in fact bringing 60 minutes to this side. So you will have a sum total of 65 minutes. And now you can subtract from the 65, you can subtract 10 from 65, 
which will give you 55. And here you can subtract 10 from, four, 10 from 14 and it will say, four, uh, you can simply say uh, 10 from 4 is 4, so it will be 4 hours 55 minutes if you are going to calculate the elapsed time. Okay, from 10, 10 to 15, 5. Grade 12, I have a question here and I want to answer the question. Okay, um, one of you are, uh, 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 there are learners now here asking me to do something, so I'm going to interrupt my PowerPoint. The PowerPoint was just about still some more questions that you can get with examples, but right now I'm getting a, a, a urgent appeal to do something on tariff systems. Okay, so um, I want to do for you something on tariff systems. Okay, let me just go back to the document camera and do something for you on tariff systems. Um, I'm assuming that the tariff system that you are referring to when you are asking me is a tariff system regarding, let's say, electricity or water. Okay, grade 12, whether it's electricity or water, it works the same. I'm going to do for you an example on electricity. Now, what you must please understand is that when we pay for electricity, we pay for the kilowatt hours, the kilowatt hours that we are using. You don't have to worry what a kilowatt hour is. You must just right now that we pay per kilowatt hour. When you are going to get your table, you are going to see that in the table there is going to be different brackets, okay? They are going to say to you, for example, for zero up to 50 kilowatt hour, you are going to pay, say, Nord Rand 8865. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not, it's actually 88 cents, more or less 89 cents. If they give you a tariff like this, grade 12, you must use the tariff as 8865. You cannot go and make it 89. You can go in the final answer and round it off. Okay. So for 50 kilowatt hour, when you use 50 kilowatt hour or anything from 0 to 50, any number that fall in the bracket 0 to 50, it will be that that you will be paying. From 51 kilowatt hours to say 250 kilowatt hour, you are going to pay another amount. Say for instance, you're going to pay one rand um, 12 comma five cents. Okay? Why do you pay more? Because we need to save electricity. Actually, we want to be, get people to use as little electricity as possible because currently we have a problem in our country with electricity. Here can now be from 251 to 500, again, a new tariff on that side, which can be one rand, say, 32,5. Okay, set. This amounts are determined by the municipality you are living in. Okay, so here in Bloemfontein, St. Lake the site. So you can go to the St. Lake website and you can go and look at the tariffs that you will pay for electricity here there. If you are in another municipality, then you go and find out what is your municipality called and you can go, uh, the, uh, go out your municipality, what are they charging you for electricity?